Hi friends, welcome back. So today we will be talking about microstructure and binary phase diagrams. So uh, we have talked about the relevance of phase diagrams. I told you that phase diagrams are useful in giving us a lot of information regarding the heat treatment because you need to perform heat treatment when you need desirable mechanical properties mainly this mechanical properties will depend upon the microstructure that is existing in a metal at a given temperature so microstructure is of great relevance so in this video i will talk about what is a microstructure and what things uh, does um, the whole microstructure in a metal will depend upon so uh, all these phase diagrams are drawn at one atmospheric pressure moreover they give you a lot of information uh, uh, regarding how to control and how to design a particular heat treatment process i already uh, talked about all these things in my previous videos uh, but keep in mind um, phase diagrams only contain equilibrium or stable phases or equilibrium states they only contain those states but nevertheless they are pretty useful which we will see in a while how they are useful in predicting the microstructures of a heat treatment process so much of introduction or no more introduction Mm, let's go ahead and um, look in detail what is a microstructure so a microstructure you will be able to see the microstructure when you take out a polished and etched specimen you need a bit of specimen preparation before it you go to the my electron or an optical microscope and see the specimen through it you need to prepare your specimen properly then the particular microstructure will depend upon a few things like this it will depend upon the phases present i already dis explained you what is a phase how you can distinguish whether your system is a single phase or a two phase system then the proportions in which these two phases are present and the arrangement whether the second phase is distributed as flakes or it is it distributed as spherical particles all these things will influence the microstructure and this microstructure will in turn influence your mechanical properties also the microstructure in a particular metal consists of the phases their proportions and their arrangement so the microstructure will depend upon the heat treatment and a few other things uh, that that's what i'm going to tell now it will depend upon the alloying elements present what are the different kind of alloying elements you put into the parent metal that will definitely dictate the kind of microstructure that you will end up with and their concentrations in a short time we will see we will have a look at steel so in if you add more and more carbon into your in, into iron which is basically you are making a cast iron then the microstructure will be totally different from that of a low carbon steel alloy then the heat treatment it is undergoing so heat treatment process is basically you take a metal you heat it up to a temperature heated to a temperature you keep it keep at that particular temperature for a while and then you cool it this is basically how a heat treatment process works but there are a lot of parameters inside the heat heat treatment process to what particular temperature you have to heat the parent metal or the parent alloy to then to till what extent you have to hold your metal alloy at that particular temperature and then at what particular rate i should bring it to the room temperature should i do a rapid cooling or do should i do a very slow cooling so all these things define the particular heat treatment process we will talk about different types of heat treatment process in the course so we will be explaining all these things at that particular moment so that was a brief introduction about microstructure now let's go ahead and talk about binary phase diagrams the first phase diagram that we will discuss today is a copper nickel binary phase diagram now just to describe you this phase diagram 
on the y axis we have temperature and on the x axis we have composition so what i mean by composition in the x axis or to elaborate a little bit to, little bit on the description of x axis here we start off with 100% copper then 100% there is only copper present then we are keep on increasing the composition of nickel or the amount of nickel present in the alloy and finally on this right extreme there is no copper present it is a pure nickel i hope that makes sense so this particular temperature is a melting point of copper because you heat it i made a small mistake here first of all this should be solid this is a solid phase okay fine having seen what is plotted on the y-axis and what is represented on the x-axis now move ahead a little bit this particular line is the liquidus i have already explained you what is a liquidus and what is a solidus for an alloy so above this there is only liquid present irrespective of the composition on the x-axis and below solidus there is only one single state called solid state irrespective of the composition and in between these two lines we have a two-phase system where both these phases will be present a few more things interesting things to note about this particular copper nickel binary phase diagram is that it's an isomorphous one by isomorphous what i mean is they are completely mutually soluble in one another so um, you can see that pretty evident from the phase diagram as well so the reason for that goes like this they have the same crystal structure both of them have a fcc phase centered cubic phase uh, crystal structure and they are of the similar atomic radii and they have almost similar electronegativity as well so that's why they form a substitutional solid solution so that's why they are called isomorphous explaining a little bit more about this diagram for a given composition or to explain a bit more about this let me take an example so let's say i, mm, I have 50 percent each copper and 50 percent each nickel by i'm referring to weight percentage then i'm i'm somewhere here i'm heating it then the process of melting will start from somewhere here around this temperature then the process of melting will be only completed once we reach this temperature so the process of melting occurs over a range of temperature but that is not the case when you have pure copper or pure nickel you heat pure copper melting begins at 1085 degrees centigrade you are not able to change its temperature until and unless the whole process of melting is completed so once it is completed then you will be able to raise your temperature the process of melting or solidification will happen at a given temperature of 1085 degrees centigrade for copper and a similar process a similar single temperature process will happen for nickel also at a temp for pure nickel at a temperature of 1453 degrees centigrade so that is not the case if you have an alloy if you have 50 percentage of copper and 50 percentage of nickel the situation is different so in between from as we move as we progress from this particular point to this particular point the amount of liquid phase present in the system will increase while the amount of solid phase present in the system will decrease and at this particular point there you won't be having you won't be having any kind of solid phase in your material this is a solid alpha uh, substitutional solid solution of copper and nickel that is called alpha phase now 
having said that in this particular regime we have got two phases we need to know more about what are the two phases and what will be the composition of these two phases and what will be the fraction of or the yeah the amount of these phases present first the composition of the phase and then the fraction of these phases present so we will discuss all these things in the next video